One of the great things about Pawtree is its ability to mix point clouds and polygon objects into one web interface. Uh, the polygon objects that we create normally are photogrammetry objects, which are created in um, Metashape, Edgesoft Metashape. And so, uh, but those polygon objects have some problems when we bring them into, into Pawtree. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to fix up polygon objects for um, importing into Pawtree. So let's hop over into Metashape and look at, uh, this is a photogrammetry model of an altar piece by Giotto. And um, you can see it's pretty flat, but it has some, it has some relief. It's an actual 3D object. And um, it looks pretty good in here, but it's got a few problems. It's one thing that photogrammetry has a problem with is scale. It doesn't know how big this object is, and it also doesn't know what orientation it should be. It should be in by default. So let me um, hop over into a program called Cinema 4D to um, show you what uh, what the problem can be. So to get to get a model out of uh, Metashape, we open up our chunk and click on the 3D model and then right click on the model that we're in, interested in exporting. We hit export model. And I'm gonna put this in output and I've already done this, but I exported it as Giotto test and as an OBJ file. So what we wanna do is export an OBJ and I'm gonna go ahead and, and redo this just so you can see how, what settings So uh, one important thing when we're exporting a model is that we export the texture as a JPEG. Um, that's that works best in Pawtree, um, and we can either we can export vertex colors if we want to, but it doesn't really it, that's that's not going to matter for what we're doing. So we click OK, and then that exports the OBJ file. It, it creates an OBJ file and and a JPEG texture. And now if I open this up, so I've opened it in Cinema 4D, and uh, if I click on the model, you can see the issue is that the, um, well, we've got a few things. First of all, the size, if you look down here, the size is three centimeters, um, so it's way too small. Uh, like I said, uh, Metashape doesn't really know how big these things are. And, uh, and also the orientation is strange. So if, we, if I rotate this around, you can see, with the object selected, this is the center of the object where where these where these arrows are, and so um, it's not it's the object isn't at the zero mark and it is rotated in several orientations. So um, what's going to happen when we get into pottery is if we start rotating this object, you can see that if we rotate it about its center, it's going to move in a weird in a weird way. And so this is what we do in Pottery is we have to enter this enter these numbers. And you can see as I as I go through the rotation, it actually moves up and down. And so that's because it's not rotating about the center. So we need to fix that before we get it into Pottery. And so let's let's hop back into um, into Metashape to show you how to fix that. So um, the first thing we need to do is know what orientation it's in. By default, Pottery doesn't have any indication what which direction is which and and where the and where the zero point is so we need to turn on a couple of things so we need to go to um, uh, model with the model selected here we need to go up to model and show hide and we need to show hide show info that brings us up a little um, crosshair to give us an idea of what which way is x y and z and then we also need to uh, go to model, show hide items, and show grid. Okay, so now as I, if I zoom out and rotate the world around, you can see our object is rotated in a very strange way. And, and this X right here marks the zero, zero, zero point of the world. So what we want to do is get this thing into um, into that, and we want to make sure this is this, this is really the floor. In Pottery, uh, Z is up, and if you notice when I rotate the world like this, um, Z is pointed up. So we so we kind of want this to be here, and we want it to be upright when we bring it in. So 
we're going to use uh, these tools up here in Pottery to um, to rotate our object. So when we when we have the selector selected, when we rotate the world, it, it rotates the entire world. We just want to rotate this object and move it independently um, uh, of these coordinates. So we want to we want to move this in relation to our to the world. So to do that, we use this set of tools here. We have move object and rotate object are our two main things. So we're going to click move object. And now when I move, it moves the object. And if I, and, and a little tip here, if you, if you, or if you're in a perspective view and you try to just move the object around, it's kind of hard to see where you're moving it. So if you grab one of these little, um, uh, little rods sticking out of the, um, the object, it will only move in that direction. So if I, if I grab the blue, um, arrow it will only move in the z direction green moves you only in y so we want to sort of uh, move this up and then there are a couple of keyboard shortcuts that are helpful um, uh, the on the number pad using seven one and three will rotate you through the through different uh, orthographic views so if i press seven i get an overhead view if i press one i get a side view and if i press three i get an edge view so um, so this is helpful to, um, so we can put this here, we're going to move it up a little bit. Um, I'm going to press the 7 key to look at an overhead view, and we want this to be kind of over this way. And now we want to turn it upright so that it's sitting um, in the right direction. So I'm going to use the rotate tool, rotate object, and I'm going to rotate it up. And this way. And then I'm going to bring back the move tool, move object. And I'm using the middle mouse wheel or the right mouse button to move the, to translate the world. So I'm going to look at it directly overhead and I'm just going to move it so that I've got, I've got the X roughly in the center. And then I'll look at the side view and then bring up the rotate object and rotate it. Again, using using if I click on these colored axis bands, it only rotates it in one in one orientation. So I, the bottom of the object is at zero. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the side view, and you can see that it is tilting forward a little bit. So we're going to bring up. So it's just a your swapping back and forth between the move and rotate tool and looking at different views and trying to get it squared away. And now that's pretty good. I'm going to move, I'm going to uh, go back to the selection tool so we can rotate the world around. And oh, it's a little bit, it's a little bit tilty. Let me go back to the, the front view and rotate object and I'm going to rotate it a little bit more that way. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I've already exported this um, to Cinema 4D and we can take a look at it in there to see how, how this is going to help us. So here in, in Cinema 4D, um, now you can see that we, uh, if we rotate the object, um, it rotates around the center of the object. So this is going to make things much easier. Um, the, the center is actually at the center of the object and it's going to rotate in a predictable way. So one other thing we've got to do, I'm going to go back to, um, uh, to Metashape. We have to scale this object. As we saw earlier, the the size was wrong in Cinema 4D, so we need to scale this. Now, sometimes this is uh, not easy to do. Um, if if this is an object that that we own, we can put scale bars on the floor when we're taking our pictures. Uh, in this case, this is uh, these are pictures taken in a museum, so uh, there is we have to. Uh, look up the measurements of this object or um, or measure it when we're in the museum which is sometimes not always possible but somehow we have to find a known measurement in here and in this case i don't actually know it 
but I'm going to I'm going to make something up just to show you how this process works. So what we do is uh, we're in the model, we're in the, um, the 3D model view, and I'm going to right click on one edge. Let's say I know that this is two meters across. I can right click on one edge and add a marker. And then I can right click on another known point and click add marker. Now, I'm going to assume that we know that this is exactly two meters from this point to this point. Uh, in actuality, that's not true, but uh, so, so when we get those in, we're going to go over to our reference tab down here. Uh, this is workspace. We go to reference, and then you can see that here in the, um, it has populated these two markers in the, in the center. And we can check those two and shift click to make sure they're both selected. And when I right click on them, I can select create scale bar. I can double click in uh, the distance measurement and type in two. And it's, it, the, the unit is meters. So it's two meters. I hit tab. And to make this stick, this is um, something that's very important and easy to forget, uh, is you have to press this little um, two arrow icon at the top. That commits it to um, and gives you some, some information about, uh, about the this, this scale. So now when I export this, it will have an actual scale. And it will be two meters. And it will be upright. So now the next time I export this as an OBJ file, and let's do that. Let's go file, export, export model, output, and let's call this test two. And click OK. Now when we bring this model in, it will be it will be sized so that it is it's two meters across. And even if you don't know the exact size of your object, it's it's helpful to be in the ballpark when you bring it into Pottery because um, it sometimes when you make a model in MetaShape, it can be um, like one centimeter or it can be a uh, hundred meters across. MetaShape really doesn't have any idea how big these things are, so so that it may be way way off in scale, and it's difficult to deal with when you get it. Into, if it's if it's in the ballpark, you can do a, a, some adjustments when you get into um, uh, into pottery. So that's the end of this section. Next, we're going to actually in, in the next video we're going to put this into um, into the pottery into a pottery model, and I'll show you how to. Um, get it situated in there.